The Ravenloft Gazetteer Volume 5 was released in 2004, written by Andrew Kermack, John Magnum, Steve Miller, Ryan Naylor, and Andrew Wyatt, with interior art by Talon Dunning, Jeremy McClough, Claudio Poaz, Richard Thomas, Beth Tote, and of course cover design by Ron Thompson. This will be the last guide in the Gazetteer series. It is written in the same format as the other Gazetteers and covers the domains of Tempest, Nova Vassa, the Shadow Rift, and Keening. This guide starts out with the Vistani tribe that were giving S a ride. They turn on her. They know what she's doing and seem to know what Aislinn's plan is. They warn her and tell her to give a message to Aislinn. Aislinn comments that they are the Hyskosis kin. Remember, he was the one who was responsible for the prophecy that brought about the Grand Conjunction. And says that they cannot stop him. They leave S stranded until she's eventually found by Aislinn's henchmen. Once in Nova Vassa, she's ended up being accosted by some thugs, trying to rape her, and she ends up fighting them off. So we get a glimpse of just how strong she is. In Nova Vassa, we find out that Dr. Ilhausen from the Nightmare Land supplement is apparently considered dead. The Church of the Lawgiver, a harsh and strict religion, is the established religion in Nova Vassa. And the revealing of the Nocturnal Sea has caused an economic boom in the port towns of Nova Vassa. Nova Vassa merchants have also attempted to construct guards outpost in Tempest to protect merchants traveling on trade routes, but every attempt has been met with disaster, mostly their deaths. And this has caused a minor uproar, and they're petitioning Prince Othmar to send an invading force into Tempest to civilize its people, which he's seriously considered doing. Now, Dr. Ilhausen and the remaining staff of his clinic for the mentally distressed are not dead. They are, however, trapped in the Nightmare Lands. Dr. Tasker turned on them, and they're stuck there, maybe awaiting rescue or help. So for all those who have the nightmare lands, well in canon this is what happened. Since the events of the Shadow Rift adventure, Wynn has become even more focused and the Inquisition has become even more ruthless and proactive. Castle Island, an island in the middle of Lake Kronov, the adventures explored in the Shadow Rift adventure is indeed its own domain with the Lady of the Lake, its Dark Lord. So that's a little bonus there. S gets chided a lot during her exploration of Tempest by Aislin for the lack of risk she's willing to take in order for her self-preservation, shall we say. This could have been an ongoing new little plot point brought up, but we'll never know. Just before leaving Tempest, S has an encounter with the gentleman caller. She's immediately charmed by him, and he compliments her on her work. He asks her what she wants with his children, and mentions that she has listed five of them in her gazetteers. Of course, S doesn't know what he's talking about, and he tells her to send a message to Aislinn that if he keeps looking, there may be a confrontation between the two, and that if he wanted to take S, he could take her at any time. He then leaves, and S is even more frustrated at not knowing Aislinn's plan truly, but she vows to find out. For her research into the domain of Keening, S kidnaps a baby from one of Nova Vassa's orphanages, and gives it to the Dark Lord Tristesta, where it will eventually die. This is done so she can explore the domain in peace. See, Tristesta is mad, and she's looking for her baby, which died with her. So S gives her a baby to placate her while she explored the domain. Now, this will only be a temporary reprieve because the baby will soon die and Tristessa will soon search for a new one, believing it to be hers. S's research into the Shadow Rift is not done by her actually going in, but by interrogations of Fay and other historical documents. But it is pretty complete, so don't think that they skimp on this one. We find out Lot survived the Shadow Rift adventure, but was crippled. He is now bent on finding a way to destroy Gwydion, and has become more ruthless than ever. Now, when Aislinn learns about the Obsidian Gate, he sees it as an interesting plan B if his current plan fails. S also makes kind of a snide comment towards the uh, 
Weather Me Twins and their guide to the Shadow Fae and believes it to be a pompous book of fiction. The appendix goes over the Church of the Lawgiver, some new classes, new feats, new spells, new magical items, and some new monsters. The NPCs covered in this guide are Prince Othmar, the political leader of Nova Vassa. He's not, he's not a good guy either. Gwydion, the Dark Lord of the Shadow Rift. Tristan Haragard slash Malkin, the Dark Lord of Nova Vassa. He's Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Tristan is married, has four children. Malkin killed his first wife and all of the side women Tristan has had affairs with. Tristan is somewhat of a ladies' man. But Malkin ignores Tristan's current wife, the one he has the four children with, as much as Tristan does. It's a loveless and political marriage, but it has produced four children. The Lady of the Lake, the Dark Lord of Castle Island, and now, due to this gazetteer, she's much more interesting. Lot and Maeve are covered. The Three Hags, Dark Lords of Tempest. Tristessa, the Dark Lord of Keening. And we learn a lot more that it was Lot that had Tristessa and her baby killed, thus transforming her into a Banshee and making her Dark Lord of Keening. Now Maeve is just now beginning to find out about this, and this is causing the rift between her and her brother to grow even further. Wynn, the lead Inquisitor of Tempest, is also covered. First, like all other Gazetteers, this one is a must-have. And this is actually a pivotal guide in the series and gives many clues as to what is going on with Aislinn's plan. And we see what kind of person S really is to sacrifice a baby for her own research. Now the dread possibilities in here are really good and the information found out within is pretty vast. This is a very good read and we all have the domains of the core finally done and because of this and the Gazeers the core is now more alive than ever. Okay, so I'm going to go on a little bit of a rant here, so it's kind of like a little warning. Yeah, if you watch my reviews of the Gazetteer series, you know that I love these. I think these are some of, if not the best products to ever come out of the Ravenloft line. When Wizards of the Coast did not renew the license to White Wolf to continue the Ravenloft products, and the line, the Ravenloft product line was canceled, I was pretty pissed and the big reason was the Gazetteers. Now had the line not been cancelled what would have happened was S would have explored the clusters, all the domains within them, all the islands of terror and all the little domains in both of the seas. So we would have had a Gazetteer on every single domain that was found in the third edition core set. Now this would have taken a couple years but still we would have had it. But what instead we got was canceling of Ravenloft for third edition and eventually expedition to Castle Ravenloft which I'm not very fond of. So we lost everything for a, a horrible adventure or reboot of the I-6 module for third edition. <clears throat> I am still to this day really upset about that to be honest with you. I wish I had been able to finish at least they were able to get the core done. This left a lot of things up in the air as to about who S truly was, what the time of unparalleled darkness was, and what Aislinn's plan was and the ramifications of him trying to fulfill his plan. Now fortunately in past interviews and such the creators of these gazetteers basically spilled the beans as to what would have happened and what the whole goal was. And if I get enough likes or requests of people then I think I'll do a video on what all that was supposed to happen and it, it's very interesting there's a lot to go into about what the plan was for Aislinn who S was the time of unparalleled darkness there's a lot to go over about that so maybe one day I'll make a video on it but 
for those true fans of Ravenloft, we really we really got the shaft and we really missed out on something very special that was going to happen. Third edition had its problems. The third edition uh, Ravenloft products had their problems, but the Gazetteers were a shining jewel in the crown of all the Ravenloft products, and I would have loved to have seen them go on. But we got shafted, and we ended up getting expeditions to Castle Ravenloft. Terrible. If I had a million dollars, I would have loved to bring these back. I would hire the same writer and say, okay, just continue where you left off. Like, no time and nothing has passed. Just keep going. It'd be great. I mean, Wizards isn't doing anything with the Ravenloft product. So, other than Curse of Stride, that's it. And that was four years ago. So, they don't know what they have. But yeah, that's that's my little rant. But yeah, if, if there's anybody who wants to know what happened and you don't want to do the research on it, I might make a video for it. Just let me know. But again, this guide is a must. Landscapes of Horror, Legacy of Tears. The ruthlessness of Nova Vass's rulers. The desolation that is the realm of Keening. The eerie revelations of the Shadow Rift and the Horde secret at the heart of Tempest stand revealed as mirrors for the twisted desires of their Dark Lords. Discover the mysteries of the Goblin Cults of Tempest, the secret atop Mount Limit and Keening, the abomination in the depths of the Shadow Rift, and the murderous machinations behind the scenes in Nova Vassa. The fifth gazetteer delves into the history and landscapes of Nova Vassa, Tempest, Keening, and the Shadow Rift, describing the lore, landmarks, and societies of these realms of the Eastern Core. Only the bravest of adventures may enter these realms. Only the luckiest may return to tell the tale.